Hello, 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 hello. I haven't seen you for ages. Hi, how are we all? So, time for some nutrition. Time for some nutrition questions. Time for some nutrition answers. Time to really think about our health because uh, we've all had holidays and things maybe have slipped a little bit. I call it snakes and ladders. Maybe you've gone down a few of those little ladders on holiday. A glass of rosé became three a day. Uh, and, uh, and those little snakes and ladders, those little ladders then become like that big ladder going up the whole thing and it's almost impossible to get back up again. So those uh, little slips are actually become quite significant. So now we're back, or even if we're not back, let's think about this. Do we want to go backwards? Do we want to have to start all over again? Or are we moving forwards on our health journey, getting towards maintenance, getting towards the stage that then we can relax because once we get to where we want to get to our healthy, healthy shape, health, healthy size, then we know that, um, you know, then we can do what we like, really. So let's breathe. Let's breathe in for four, out for six. 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 Don't we feel better already after the madness of the day, after the busy, busy, busy working day, maybe kids as well, and maybe goodness knows not, maybe ill members of the family or traveling or anything. It's all too manic, isn't it? So let's breathe and let's get calm because stress is the main cause of weight gain. So let's think how positive we are. We're in heaven. We are in heaven. Open your eyes. This is heaven. It doesn't get any better than this because who knows? what's around the corner and again positivity and purpose are incredibly important in the weight loss journey because if we're positive we won't be reaching for the wrong things or using food for the wrong reasons ha ah, everything's calm so thank you for joining me lots of people joining me and i've got lots of questions and we've got lots to talk about because i missed a week i think so i was away for a week so lots of questions first one's about gut health what do we take for gut health? Good question, great question. Second one about couscous. Now, I think I've done about five posts about couscous, but I'll talk about couscous again. Ha, maybe look at my previous posts, uh, and uh, but we'll talk about couscous, yes, yes, yes. Then breakfast, what's a good protein breakfast? We'll talk about that, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, and yogurt, we're all obsessed by yogurt. Yogurt, get in touch with me privately, because I do a lot of yogurt with my private clients. There's a lot to talk about with yogurt. You're obviously very keen on yogurt. So, but you know, that's, um, that's something that I spend a lot of time with for each individual. So reach out, do a one-to-one -one with me. Let's talk yogurts in that, because I spend a lot of time talking about yogurts, they're incredibly important. Um, so do reach out and we'll talk about that. So, talking about gut health. Gut health is so important. Now, a post I'm just gonna do is how stress can destroy your gut health. Now, one in five women in the UK has IBS. Do you have IBS? It's actually often caused by stress. It's a fascinating process. I'm going to talk you through it. You probably know it already, but I might remind you about biology. So, your body, the blood flow is constantly going towards your gut to aid with your, di aid with your digestion. Because your digestion, they do say your gut is your first brain. This is your second brain, because this is so important. This is everything, isn't it? This is what gives you cancer or allergens or depression or anxiety, serotonin comes from the gut, or you know, poor gut microbiome can lead to skin and hair, anxiety and depression again. Yeah, blood pressure, all these things, cholesterol, they're all caused by poor gut health. So let's not deny, gut health is ridiculously important. So gut health is the 57 trillion cells, yeah, all working together, and you've got this beautiful gut health, this lovely flora and fauna, and you are flying and you're amazing. So yes, it is the most important thing. And what's incredible, one course of antibiotics, one course can destroy your gut health for six months. Isn't that amazing? A lot of people are living on antibiotics, not so much now because the, and the NHS, thank God, aren't giving so many out because it's just got prolific and there's too many reactions and they become almost, you know, they're almost not working anymore because people are living on them so much, so it's not a bad thing. Um, and also it really, really does kill your gut health. So the question was, what do you take for gut health? Well, I don't believe, you know me, my clients know me, I don't believe in pill pushing. 
I really believe that if you're really healthy, you shouldn't need to take pills. There's very few vitamins I recommend, um, and very few um, uh, herbs I recommend, as in you're always cooking with herbs, but I always recommend turmeric. We can talk about that as well with your gut health. Um, but I don't recommend two vitamins, and my clients know. So really, I'm not a pill pusher at all, and I feel you should get everything naturally. Probiotics are ridiculously expensive. Do you know which one you need? It's like, I think there's sort of 57 penicillins. Do you know which one you need? Same with probiotics, do you know which one? So you're gonna go and get a, a multi-probiotic, a gen, generic one, and we know that with the, with the multi-bits, they're kind of useless really, because you don't know what you're targeting, you're getting more of what you don't need and not enough of what you do need, maybe. So I don't recommend pill popping, I recommend going natural. And there are so many natural ways of getting your gut health up through your probiotics. Um, we've had probiotics for hundreds of years and never had a problem. Why do we need to suddenly invest in really expensive probiotic pills? It's marketing. So let's talk about natural gut health. So if you're eating really healthily, you're going to have natural gut health. And obviously your Greek yogurt is one of the best probiotics there is. Yay! So there you go. If you're having Greek yogurt quite often, remember mixing it up. We'll talk about yogurt if you reach out to me. You know, your Greek yogurt is one of the best probiotics from the natural probiotics you can buy. And Tesco's Lidl Sainsbury's, yeah, Greek yogurt, not Greek style yogurt. That's lactose, that's still got dairy in it. Greek yogurt is strained, so it becomes a protein. So it's not a carb, it becomes a protein. And that you've got, it's lactose free. You don't want lactose. It's lactose free and you get your probiotics off your Greek yogurt. Simples. Oh, what's another really simple one? Sauerkraut. I always say this, sauerkraut been around for hundreds of years. It's a pickle. It was made hundreds of years ago because it's fermented food. So when we weren't rich or we couldn't get near the sea or fresh food, sauerkraut was invented. That's one of the best probiotics there, you know, there is. So just on top of your lunch, have a mouthful of a dollop of probiotic um, of sauerkraut. It's delicious. There are so many good ones now. There's a raw brand RAW that do really good ones. So get your sauerkraut in, really, really yummy. There's your probiotic. Easy, you don't have to buy pills. Kimchi. Are we going to Japanese restaurants? Personally, I live in them. Love my uh, Japanese. So kimchi is just that root veg that they just chop. It's like an onion that comes with it. Or you can get kimchi in your jar. I don't actually like it in a jar. You can get it um, fish oil free or organic. I'm, I'm, I have to admit, I'm not a fan of it in a jar. I don't know what it does to me. It, it just doesn't work for me. I'm sure it works for you, maybe. That's the cheapest way of doing it. Fermented food. It's food that has been fermented. It goes in the jar and that is your probiotic and it's what we've done you know for years and years and no one's had a problem with it we don't need to buy expensive pills so again if you like kimchi go when you're in a japanese restaurant make sure you have your kimchi or get it in sainsbury's in a jar but those are all probiotics next uh the celiac husk all those um, kombuchas yeah they are all a great probiotic you've got some healthier than others i've done a couple of posts on that kombucha some you can actually see the the bacteria floating around in them, those are really healthy. That's your gut bacteria, that's your gut microbiome getting a boost. Um, some of them are less healthy, but you know, lovely ginger, um, uh, kombucha, can easily replace an alcoholic drink, you know, and it really, and it's actually healthy. Kefir, another fantastic one, very fattening, so only twice a week, but kefir is a beautiful uh, probiotic. So there's just so many, you don't need to be investing in poverty pills. There are lots of natural ways of getting your probiotics in. And remember, your gut health is everything. It is, it is literally, it dictates all your allergens and your attitude to life and your positivity and your breathing and your skin and your hair and your anxiety and your depression. And, you know, all of that sugars can really raise the stress levels. So let's talk about IBS, right? So why does stress muck up your gut health? It's all about adrenaline. So when we're stressed, Obviously, our body immediately releases one of our hormones, adrenaline, the adrenaline hormone, to deal with the stress because we're fight or flight. So when we're stressed, we are an animal and our body thinks, oh my God, oh my God, there must be a battle, fight or flight. So your body's in fight or flight mode, produces the adrenaline to deal with that panic moment. Now, generally, because your gut health is so important, the blood flow is generally always facing towards your nutrition, your digestion, because if that's not working, nothing's going to work, is it? If you haven't got your nutrition working, nothing's going to work. So generally, the blood flow of your body is focused there and doing a really good job on helping your gut, dealing with nutrition, helping your nutritional processes, the products, you know, everything's working. And it's dealing with your nutrition needs, getting all the cells in conjunction with each other, doing what they should, touching the receptors, they should be working together as a team because they've all got to work together. 
and that's fantastic. Now, when we have stress and adrenaline comes along, woof, oh my goodness, no, 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 your body's in panic, there must be a reason, there must be something terrible going on. So it diverts the blood flow away from your, your gut and from your nutritional system and your nutritional um, biomes, and it instead diverts the blood flow to your peripheries, to your arms and your legs, because we're an animal, we're supposed to be running away from that stress, aren't we? That's the natural default of an animal. When you're in stress, you run away. So suddenly your body is not directing that lovely blood flow towards your gut, it directs it elsewhere. And this is why stress can cause poor gut health and IBS. Because if you're constantly stressed and your body's not helping your gut health, but instead dealing with other parts of the body that are being set up to deal with that adrenaline surge, you can imagine what's gonna happen. So karma, breathing, Meditation, we just did our breathing. I spend a lot of time doing that in our one-to-ones in our, with our cognitive behavior therapy sessions and our neuralistic programming sessions. It's becoming more and more a thing. Stress is a major, major cause of weight. Stress is a major cause of blood pressure going up. Now, one in three people have a blood pressure problem. That's a pretty scary statistic. Again, that's stress. Again, that's adrenaline. And thirdly, stress drives your insulin resistance, which means you can't lose weight. Too much insulin resistance leads to leptin resistance. Leptin is the hormone that makes you feel, feel full as satiation hormone. So if you're leptin resistant, yeah, you are gonna feel hungry all the time. Do you ever get to that, feeling hungry all the time? If you're one of those people who's hungry all the time, you become leptin resistant, which means you are hungry all the time because your body is not getting all the messages. It's, it's literally disrupted the flow, disrupted the whole system and we need to get you off the stress, off the adrenaline, to get you functioning again. So stress is a major, major cause of the gut health, but also many other things. But let's not forget the sugar is the major cause of the gut health too, isn't it? Because if you're constantly feeding yourself refined starches, which have no water in them, and what I said, your body can't cope, your liver and kidney don't have enough water. If you have 10 mouthfuls of rice, you've got to have 40 mouthfuls of water because there's no water in, those, in that food and therefore your kidney never have to work double the speed and then we've got the water retention and the bloating again. And, you know, if your body's complaining, if your body's sending out messages like hives or itches or allergens or allergic reactions, that is your gut saying, help me. As I always say, when you break your ankle, it's hot and it tells you it's angry and it says, help me. Your gut can't talk in that way. So your gut sends messages, which are allergens, reactions, allergies, skin, hair. So listen to your gut. It is your first brain and get your gut microbiome sorted because if you haven't got that then the whole rest of the system won't work. So good question about gut health and take this probiotics. Yes, lovely. Right, couscous. Okay, couscous. Talked about this many times. Couscous is mainly made of sort of barley or wheat. So that's great. If you're moving all day, you definitely need to have lots of barley and wheat because they sort of bulk you up. They're not a vitamin or a mineral or a nutrient. They just, they're a bulking agent. To, you're a farmer, hunter, gatherer, labourer, a child, athlete. Yep, so great. You need lots of barley and wheat. But if you're sitting at your desk, do you need lots of barley and wheat? Would you eat barley and wheat? Do animals go around eating couscous? Would you give your cat or dog couscous? So really, or semolina, same thing. Yeah, but couscous comes in a packet. It doesn't grow naturally. Couscous is not something that grows. Maybe people think it is. I think in America they think, sorry, pasta grows on trees. Some people were asked, sorry for being rude. <sighs> maybe, they think, maybe people think couscous grows on trees. Couscous is made, it's a pasta. It's man-made. It's been made by somebody. It's not grown. So it's a pasta and its GI is 64, the same as a croissant. Great, I say, if you're gonna be moving all day. Your body needs masses of sugar. That's a real high sugar. We say the GI sugar around 40, 64. White sugar's 59, honey's 67. So couscous is kind of equal to eating honey. Great if you're moving all day and you're an athlete or a child or a laborer, but not many of my clients are. They're generally sitting at their desk. So when you have that much sugar, blood sugar, blood sugar, remember? Yeah, up goes, up goes, the, up goes the blood sugar level. Ah, you could go into coma so quickly your blood, body squirts up that insulin, your pancreas squirts up that insulin, grabs it all, puts it in your muscle, but the leftover goes in your fat cells 
and then you've got low blood sugar and you crave more. So fasta, like any sugar, is an, is an addiction. You'll then crave more and crave more and crave more. Do you need wheat or barley or semolina? Do you, as I said, do you give it to your cat or dog? It's a question. Yes, if you're an athlete partner with dog. Yes, if you're moving a lot. Yes, if you really need to uh, burn off a lot of energy. But if you're not, do you need 64 GI, not far off sugar, way over, um, sugar's 59, way over sugar, sorry, near a honey. Um, quinoa, I'm always buying on as well, that's 59, same as white sugar. So again, does your animal eat quinoa? Would you feed it? Does it need it? Again, do you need bulking? If you need bulking, fabulous. But if you don't, think about it, okay? So uh, all these things, when they come in a packet, they tend to have a preservative in them because they would go mouldy. So when they have a sell by date, man-made, in a packet, in the cupboard, there's a clue, there's a preservative. Let's go back to our gut health again. So preservatives in the food, like your bread and your rice and your pasta, are there to kill the bacteria because those kind of foods will go green very, very quickly if they didn't have preservatives. They're not going to come all the way on an aeroplane and go to Tesco's and you buy them. So they have preservatives in them. Those pre preservatives are designed to kill the bacteria. So you have those preservatives and they go and they kill your gut bacteria. Ironically, as we said, you want as much gut bacteria as you can possibly have. We just want to be dripping in gut bacteria. So when you're having anything like these packet foods with a cell by date with um, preservatives in them, you're deliberately sabotaging your gut health. So again, question, do you want to be sabotaging your gut health? Again, with colouring and flavouring, that goes into your body and that does that to your gut health. So let's talk about gut health, gut health, gut health. God, it's so important. And look how easy it is to make it beautiful and look how easy it is to make it not beautiful. And that's your choice. So breakfast, yes, breakfast. Oh my God, breakfast, yes. Breakfast is so delicious and so important. From 41, if you mix, miss breakfast, from 41 years old, your body says, oh, there's a famine, we're an animal. We've talked about that. And it'll actually stop fat burning. So really please have breakfast. And breakfast, if you do the toast or cereal trick, you are having a GI, very high sugar load again. You've got to go move an awful lot. And if you're not, then you've got the whole thing going on with the insulin again and going to your muscles and the rest being stored as fat and then the low blood sugar and then craving more. So if you don't want to be addicted all day to having more sugars, like cereal and toast, then really we all know you have a huge protein breakfast. So yes, stuff your face on avocados. Do you know, it's really all ham or egg or mushrooms. Yeah, mushroom omelette. Yeah, or your yogurts, um, protein based. Uh, and, um, and what else are we going to have? Oh, um, a mung bean porridge is one of my favourites, or tofu scrambled. Really try and think protein. Oh, haddock or kippers. Oh my God, sardines. Ah, oh, sardines, smoked salmon, smoked salmon and eggs. Smoked salmon and egg and ham. Oh my God, breakfast is fantastic. Ah, but if we're not cooking, you've got your chia pod and you've got your yogurts and you've got your, I mean, this is some grain free, anyway, not gonna, but basically protein, 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 protein for breakfast is fabulous because it fills you up, feeds your muscles, gives your brain a go because that's what proteins feeds your brain. Yep, so really go for a big protein breakfast and a hearty breakfast and you'll feel an awful lot better than somebody who's just had a coffee and run out the door. That's not going to help you at all. Remember coffee is, well, we know about coffee is adrenaline. What happens to adrenaline? We just talked about adrenaline. And uh, if you have more than two coffees, so let's think about adrenaline, let's think about our gut health, let's think about caffeine, let's think about a protein breakfast. You see, it all connects, it all connects, it's all just about health, it's all just about health, it's so simple. Just think healthy, yeah? Now, what I just want to talk briefly about is my FMFF, I call it my FMFF, which is my, um, my 50 minutes fitness focus. 50 minutes fitness focus. I've mentioned it a couple of plants. I really want you all to come aboard. I'm doing this, okay? For the whole of August, whether I'm well or not, I'm gonna do the 50 minute fi fitness focus. So each day, literally, you're gonna dedicate 50 minutes of your life. That is not much when you consider there's 112 hours, waking hours in a week. And so by doing 50 minutes for seven days, it's only about five and a half hours. There are 112 waking hours in a week. I don't think it's too much to ask. When you think an athlete is doing eight hours exercise a day or 10, a model, uh, one of Margot Ruby and Rihanna, they're all doing 10 hours resistance exercise a day. So if we're saying we're gonna do five and a half in a week, I don't think that's too much to ask if you really wanna get into your healthiest space. And I call it my 50 minute fitness focus. And I'm basically suggesting, because that's what I'm doing and I love it, already feeling happier and more positive and more serotonin and body's looking better and feeling more alive. And 20 minutes, slow jog and then 30 minutes resistance. So 20 minutes slow jog, 
followed by, or if you can't do the job, do a good walk. Yeah, and then 30 minutes resistance, because normally your subcutaneous fat, for most of my clients, is more of the problem than the visceral fat. So just 50 minutes. So you get up in the morning, set your alarm 50 minutes earlier, and you just do your 20 minute fast walk or, or jog, and then, or slow jog, and then you do your 30 minutes resistance. That's it, done for the day. Wow, it's so good. It's gonna get your visceral fat down, subcutaneous fat down, get your endorphins going, get your positivity going, change the shape of you, change your energy levels, change your positivity levels. Um, and make you younger because obviously when you do that morning stuff you get your you get your free radicals going down and you become younger all those things I talk about all that and all my one-to-ones again there's so much to talk about in those one-to-ones isn't there but for you personally this is obviously just generic reach out to me to have a private chat about all this because obviously we should make it bespoke for your needs so 50 minute fitness focus will you all do it I'm doing it every day let's say for August will you do it too Will you do it too? Will you join me? Yes, please. Yes, please. And I want you to do comments how you feel, uh, you know, in literally three days. I bet you'll feel a massive difference. I think you'll feel even great even the first time. It's not much to commit to. Hopefully works a bit quieter at the moment, or life's a bit quieter, or even when you're on holiday. What's 50 minutes when you're on holiday? That's easy. Or what's 50 minutes if life's a bit quieter? Or set your alarm 50 minutes earlier? Whatever. Okay. So, hope that's been helpful. So, we talked about gut health a lot. We talked about um, couscous a lot. <laughs> we talked about um, breakfast a lot. Uh, and we talked about the fitness challenge. And anything beyond that, as I said, reach out. Let's have a private chat about it. You know I'm here to help. And um, you see all my reviews. I'm now tracking as number one weight loss expert in London, number one weight loss nutritionist in London, uh, number one weight loss help in London on Google organic so you know you're in safe hands reach out to me and i'm passionate involved with all my clients as you can see so that motivation and accountability which is so incredibly important and that bespoke service with the one-to-ones is really life-changing and i look forward to speaking to you thank you for joining me lots and lots of love so my next one's in two weeks time i look forward to seeing you then and um love comments love all that kind of stuff please get in touch and lots of love and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks, but make lots of comments and reach out if you want any personal help. Lots of love, good to speak to you. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.